Greetings again, VAC fans. Here we are at the Rechtenwald Yapel VAC Lab Mini Meet number five. That's right, we made it to number five. So, he has not run his G3 since I took care of most of that rear end. But, we got a Centria, run, a Centria 1 with the stiff oblique, and that'll drive a little different than the original G3 with the chevron brush roll. All right, so take it away, Thomas, and tell me what you think. They are going to drive a little differently. Oh, my gosh. What did you do? <laughs> well, that is easier to push than my G5 and my Century 1. Should be smooth. That is smooth as a baby spot. That is incredible. Alright, so now we gotta switch heads, because this one's gonna be a little different. Yeah, that is incredible. Like my G5 doesn't even drive that smooth, and it's like it's my favorite Kirby as far as like driving, um, of course a collar stance, but my G5 drives better than my Century of One. Seems like the older they get, the harder they get to drive. I don't know why. Yeah, it's a little hard. Yeah. Just a little bit. I can tell a difference. I think I have a new favorite curry. <laughs> wow. Definitely a huge improvement. Fabulous. Glad you like it. Sweet. Let's start out with this wonderful D3 that's unbelievably quiet. Tell me about it. It came out in April of 1980 and it was in production up until April of 1986. Then in 1986 Rainbow celebrated their golden year and they invented the D4 claiming that it had more power, it cleaned better, it had more attachments, blah blah blah. They redesigned the D4 in 1990 and came out with the SE. Four years later, they came out with the SCPE, which basically just means they upgrade the power nozzle. Over there. Yeah, there's PE yeah. over there. Yeah. Power nozzle 1, power nozzle 2. Mm -hmm. Go to 1998. They come to the Rainbow E2, but it's a one-speed. It um, That's when they added the HEPA filter, and they basically just... Uh, made the air quality better because the D3 and D4 don't have an exhaust built and they just use plain water. E2 one speed had a HEPA exhaust filter, but we don't have one here as you can see. 2004, they come out with the E2 two speed. Two speeds. And the Hurricane brushless motor. Basically all that means is it has infinite motor life. And you have a high speed and a low speed switch, which will let you, basically you can run it all the time in your house and let it clean the air at a low speed, low sound. It don't, it's not super loud. Yeah, I guess down there rather than all the way up there. Yep. Then fast forward to 2007, they come out with, it's basically, it's the same thing as the previous one, but they put the silence foam in it because... The previous model, the Gold E2 Gold 2 speed, was really loud. Uh, customers were complaining about. Then in 2007, they came out with the E2 Platinum, and it has silence going on it, which basically just makes the machine run quieter. It silences all the noise. It still it does the same thing as the E2 Gold though. It's the same machine, just the blue, uh, Platinum. Sorry, is more quieter. All right, so if we start here on camera left, this would represent 
like early 1980, the first time a D3 entered the market. And then if we go all the way over to the right, when is the last year that they made the platinum version, or are they still making it? They made it, and it just came in 2011, and it went to the E2 Black, the newest one they have out today. Okay, so we're looking at 31 years then, total years. So beginning so of the D3 to the end of the platinum. Yeah. So all through the 80s, all through the 90s. Uh, through the, the aughts, and then just into 2010, the 2011, and then that's it. So this is 31 years of rainbows. And something you're going to see, because Thomas is leaving me this platinum right here to do a full workup on it video-wise, you're going to see a whole house cleaning with that, plus a whole bunch of tests on the D3 and the E2 platinum. He also, I have to quote, he has my newest power. I do have the new... Power nozzle type 12, power nozzle 3, whatever you want to call it. There it is, over in the corner. If you guys are wondering yep. how that, I managed to get that, I found it online. It's uh, rainback.com. They sell the power nozzles with the cord to fit the older models. It can only go to an E2. It can fit any E2, but it cannot fit these. Yep. That's the only downfall. All right. So stay tuned for all those videos. You know, we really should go over these power nozzles. So take it away again, Thomas. As you can see on the, which is my right, which would be his left. Yeah. The power okay. nozzle two, that was introduced in the D4, that D4 SCPE in 1994. It, over the years, it remained in production up until with this machine up until 2011, and then it was discontinued. So that's like 17 years, something like that, 1994, 2011, something like that. Then they came out with the Power Nozzle Type 12, which I call the Power Nozzle 3. They came out with it in 2011 with the newest Rainbow Now, which is the E2 Black. Um, the first year of them, they had the center belt theme like the PN12 does. But a year later, they switched it and tweaked it to make what it is right there. That's what you find nowadays. If you had an in-home demonstration of an E2 Black, that power nozzle will look exactly the same as that one. Along with the newer machine, of course, which I've showed off on my YouTube channel of my aunt's E2 Black and stuff, what it does and what it's like and all that. It's basically... This machine and that power nozzle. Nothing different. It's just a, a, basically a color stance is all it is. And a few little minor changes to the hose, the wands, but it essentially does the same thing. Nothing different. Okay. All right, so Thomas tells me this is the only machine he has never used. The Wind Tunnel Max. Now, he's got a red Wind Tunnel 3 that's just gangbusters. So, go ahead and let her rip with the Wind Tunnel Max. <laughs> oh, yeah. It just, just doesn't move, huh? Here, go ahead and actually turn it on, and I'll show you why they had to stop making it. Go ahead and just turn it on, just leave it that way. Because the brush roll just keeps spinning. Yep, even though you just push the button, it'll just keep going. Yep. Well, before we forget, Thomas saw these things, or rather I saw these things, and asked Thomas, hey, wait a minute, we should compare hoses and power nozzles for the older D series. Take it away, Thomas. All right, the D3, as you can see the hose right there, that's the only hose you get. The power cord ran on the outside of the hose to the power nozzle. And the power nozzle that came out with the D2, D3 was this power nozzle right here, the PM1. It um, 
The one that came with the D3 was a, diff a little bit different from collar stance, but it was essentially the same power rods. They looked the same, just collar stance is a little different. But the power cord ran on the outside of the hose, and they didn't have an electric hose back then. Okay, fast forward to the D4 when it came out. It was essentially the same as the D3. It didn't have the power hose. It only had the dry hose and the power cord ran on the outside of the hose. Then, fast forward to 1990, when the SE, Rank D4 SE came out, they came out with this baby right here, the very first electric hose. They still had the original power nozzle, the PM1, and it had, it had the electric hose, but it didn't have, the, have a trigger. Fast forward four years later, 1994. They came out with the PM2, electric hose still, and they had the fancy triggering method. If you sucked up a sock, all you had to do was let go of the handle and the power nozzle would stop turning. So the trigger came out in 94? Yes. Ooh, okay. 94. And like I said, it had the triggering stain here if you, to stop the power nozzle from spinning. And same, basically the same hose as this one. The only difference is just the trigger on the hose. Rainbow claimed when they came out with the PN2, it supposedly had more vacuum power, more agitation, it cleaned better, but it made a flaw. It has horrible air leakage. They did not design the inside guts that well. From what Bill has demonstrated in his channel, this D4 SEPE with this power nozzle only gets 33 CFM. That's a... Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a thumbs down. It's unfortunate. It cleans surface-wise, but it don't deep clean. This power nozzle essentially has more airflow than this one. So, as that saying goes, newer is not always better. So, you have to... Just cause they patent something to make it newer, don't mean it's better. So that's what you get. And that's basically the difference of the hoses. Like when they went to the E2, it was essentially the same as this one. It wasn't no different. They just changed the style of the hose. It had the trigger, it was the electric hose and whatnot. Essentially the same hose, just different connections and just a little tweaking here and there. But essentially same thing as the uh, second electric hose on the D4. About the same. So Thomas had this wacky idea. I have this DC-65, and here's the 65 brush roll. He says that the 41 brush roll is better than the 65. So anyway, we're going to go fiddle with it, and maybe I'll do a couple of sand in the carpet tests and whatnot, see what's going on. So take it away, Thomas. Before we do, though. Okay, before we do. That's a little difference in the brush roll. Yeah, the brush roll is really weird. So I've, I've never seen this before. These bristles right here are super uh, well, just diminutive. They're not only short, but they're also tiny. Look what looks what follows up behind it. These things are massive, and they're also stiff. So it must create some kind of an interesting beating action. It's just it's kind of weird. I I didn't know that. That's really something. But uh, guess what? That's what it does. Uh, hot rotted his dice now, so huh? he's got the same that I got. He's sophisticated. Ooh. Yes, so that's that's doing a great job. Look at that. That's really got some pickup. Yeah, so I essentially hot rod his Dyson now. <laughs> Put an older head on a newer machine. How about that? Hey, 
You even got some hair in there. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's probably where we were pulling stuff out of the uh, of the forty one head because it was kind of dirty compared to my sixty five. Although the sixty five had a lot of my wife's hair in there. It claims to have more power. Yeah. Well, it might use more power. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back fans. Mr. Rechtenwald has left me with a present. On the left is the original DC-65 brush roll. On the right is his brush roll that he is no longer going to use because he has the Ball Animal 2 one. It's the original one from his DC-41. And I want to take a look at this wild brush roll pattern. So you're not imagining things. Look how long those are down there and look how short and tiny these are up here. So what an unusual uh, brush roll this really is. I mean, that is just, I was not expecting anything like that. And here is the DC-65, and they're all uniform, right? And they're all, I guess, medium. They're not really super short, and they're not really super long. And they're, they're medium stiff. But this is really wild. So he wanted me to go ahead and do the 100 millimeters of sand in the carpet to see what kind of differences there were. And I looked up for the DC-65 and I saw 16 millimeter recovery after 10 full strokes. So we're gonna do this again and see what the DC-41 does. And we'll see if there's an improvement or if things get worse. And the flash is on, fantastic. All right, here we go. 100 millimeters of sand with the DC-41 head. Now this head, I guess, is just a standard head. It's not the the animal head or any kind of specialty head. It's just the regular DC-41 head? Yes. Okay, all right. It's the one that came with it when I bought yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yours just says DC-41 stock or flat or, you know. Yeah, it just says regular. DC-41. I don't have that right. one special. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yeah, the one the last backward pass, I suppose. So maybe you could say it's ten and a half. Oops, oops, not bad. All right, so let's see how we did. We're looking to break sixteen millimeters. What will it do? What does it look like? And did it pick up any bonus material? Ooh, that's not very much. And as Thomas can definitely testify. We got a G4 out and went out on the deck and blew these Cyclones completely clean, along with a Hoover Max. All right, so that is, yeah, that's as clean as that's going to get. So that's what we recovered. Ooh, man, that is not much. Miko and Finland, you was right. So here's some bonus material. Going to get rid of that. And there's a little... Little like it's almost like a little seed or something like that. Right, that's gone. And another tiny little piece of bonus material. And got a few other little pieces to get rid of. Well, it looks just like as far as sand. If I'm going to guess, it looks like the DC-65 head, as far as sand goes, just sand, is probably quite an improvement. You know what? I can't see how many millimeters that actually is just yet. Here. I figured it would have done something better than the head that you it originally came with. All right, so that's as clean as that's gonna get. Miko Finley, you definitely was right. The all animal two head is a better, yeah. way better improvement. And that's what we got. Let's see, we have a good focus on it. All right, hope so. All right, looks pretty good. So back in the straw it goes. You know what? I do need my ruler. 
that's kind of handy to have. Otherwise, I can't tell how much we recovered. You always missing something. All right. What will it be? Nothing left there. Make sure it's settled. All right, let's see. Out of 100, we have, oh, it is slightly better. It is slightly better. All right, so we're looking at 20, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 20 is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say 20, I know it's a little hard to see right there. Do, do, do. Get a good focus. No, I'm going to revise that to 19. Okay, so we're looking at about 19. So honestly, realistically speaking, that's not a, an appreciable difference, especially since I have vacuums that do 80. What? The it, high performance that Ali you borrowed did 83. Yeah. So the still, Kirby's do yeah. 50. The Rainbows do. The rainbow that you tested at 50, I believe, and... Yeah. Yeah. So, that's... sand pickup is not this type of Dyson's forte at all. So, this one looks like it did a little bit more. That might be within a margin of error. I've done pick, sand pickup with this more than once, but in any case, they're really close. This one's 16, this one 20, uh, but that's still pretty low. I mean, 10 passes and... You know that's that's all you get. That's garbage. So yeah, that, that's not real good. Not good for sand pickup. Pick up other things, but definitely not sand. So what we have left here to close out the mini meet is Thomas doing his normal regular Ricard 8850 vacuuming. Yep, yeah. that's right. Has to be done every time because that's the way he wants it. And I get to pick up the leftover sand. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So one way to get stubborn sand out of a carpet is to turn it over. You need a vacuum that has some kind of decent agitation. You don't want to kill your carpet vacuum, but you certainly need to agitate it quite a bit. So Thomas is going to take care of that. Here we go. His favorite vacuum. <laughs> This is where most of it was, somewhere in there. You can hear that one? Yep. No, it can't grab. It's too flat. Uh, trip, trip. Right here, do a little bit that way. Alright, so if we got close to 20 out, that means there's almost 80 still left in there. So let's take just a quick peek and see what happens. Right, here we go. Let's see what we have. Ooh. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Take a look at that. Yeah, isn't that something? Never would have thought of that, huh? Now if I could figure out an easy way maybe to pick that up. So it's probably got a couple different ways to do it. And measure it just to see what it gets.
think that's pretty good. Now we'll see what it picked up. I probably don't think that's 80, but you know what? Who knows? It's a mystery. Well, it's a bunch to be sure. Funny, all this trouble just to transfer the sand up about maybe a half a millimeter so you can put it on a piece of paper. All right, that's pretty good. Got a tiny little bit of bonus material. Eh, got some. I don't think that, that doesn't look like 80 to me, but let's see. ruler out here and a piece of paper so I can actually see it you know it got a bunch I'll tell you that but it's an 80 we're looking at 30 37 more or so let's see we got a good focus on that 30 hope you can see that about 37 more. So that means there's a bunch still left in the carpet. <laughs> so away we go. All right, so here's the 8850 on bare floors. Brush it off. Okay, so the 8850 actually leaves the floor a little gritty. This is the one that actually removes all the grit. The height is set to one. Sounds nice. Yep, now our grit is gone. There we go. Cool. Now for this side. Uh... Yep. You know what, since we did sand in the carpet test, I think we need to bring out Shredder. I think he's gotta come out. He's gotta make an appearance. All right. The big, the bad, the red, the gorgeous looking simplicity symmetry, otherwise known as the Shredder. All right, to finish up 
the Rechtenwald Yapel Vac Lab Mini Meat number five. We have the Shredder. Let her rip. That's the uh, Kirby tablet. That's the lavender scent tablet. Like yep. I bet there's no sand in there now. You know what? You picked my card so well. I can hear you pushing this. Well, going forwards, this one is zero. Um, but going backwards, yeah, it's more than zero. A little bit. Thanks to Thomas for bringing all his nifty gaggle of rainbows up. You're going to see a lot of videos with that for sure. Hope you enjoyed the historical lesson. And until next time, happy vacuuming.